Hi folks, I'm Rick Mikesell, back again to talk about another exciting warm water opportunity here in Colorado and across the country. As water warms and ice goes away, it's time to start thinking about targeting toothy critters, pike and muskie. Pike and muskie are exciting opportunities on a fly rod, particularly for their explosive eats and overall giant size. Pike here in Colorado in the high 30 to 40 inch class are a true trophy and really exciting to go chase with the fly rod. So just like in the previous video, I'm gonna go down the list and show you some essential tools to chase these fish on the fly. First and foremost, let's talk about fly rods. Let's talk about the main tool in the arsenal. Because of the size of the fly, not so much the fight in the fish, we need really large fly rods. For pike here in Colorado, I prefer an eight weight, and in some cases with larger flies, a nine. And for the tiger muskie that we have here, and the true muskie that I hope to chase in the Midwest this year, we're talking about rods in the nine to 12 weight class. While the bigger specimens do fight fairly hard, we're not super concerned with the rod being a fish fighting tool. More so we're talking about turning over gigantic flies. So we need some power. TFO just recently released this rod in collaboration with Blaine Chocolate. This is the BC Big Fly. This comes in an eight, 10, and 12 weight and it covers the gamut of size of flies that you need to throw. This rod is designed specifically for chasing these large predator fish and has some features that really help you turn over those large flies, particularly a very stiff butt with lots of power and a little bit softer tip to create an open loop so you don't have hang up on the cast. We'll see this in a lot of pike and muskie specific rods, but an extended butt section. And this is to form figure eights, although in fly fishing they're not figure eights, big drags at the boat to trigger a strike as a fish follows in right to the edge of the boat. This allows you to drop that tip in the water and make big sweeps. And usually you'll get an eat right on the direction change. You're able to hammer that hook home with all this leverage. This rod, being a TFO, is a very high quality graphite, but comes in at a quite inexpensive price. So if you're looking for a starting place to chase these fish, this is a great entry point. If you already have an existing eight, nine, or 10 weight, absolutely, you can use it for these fish species, but these rods have specific features that really help you take your game to the next level. If you're looking for a more premium offering, this is the IMX Pro M from G Loomis. This rod is designed specifically for muskie applications. It's available in an 11 and a 12 weight, and it's designed to throw the absolute biggest flies and heaviest sinking tips we're throwing for large muskie and tiger muskie. Same features with an extended fighting butt, uh, big long foregrip for making those casts count as you're throwing huge flies all day and your arms getting fatigued. Super stiff butt section, little bit softer tip to open up that loop, and it's built on the IMX graphite platform, which is quickly becoming one of my favorite graphites from Loomis. It's strong, it's got a ton of feedback in the cork, it's resilient, and it's difficult to break, which is nice for throwing these big flies. When it comes to fly reels, we're not super worried about the drag and having a really powerful drag. Pike can thrash, they can run a little bit, but they're not gonna put a ton of stress on your reel. So we just wanna make sure we have something that's high quality, that won't break. Um, we don't need to break the bank on drag. So I have a couple options here, um, showcasing both an inexpensive offering and a very, very high class offering, the stuff that I tend to fish. This is the TFO NTR. This is a very inexpensive, but fully machined sealed drag fly reel from TFO. Uh, being fully sealed, you never have to do maintenance. You don't have to worry about sand, gravel, water getting inside. Being fully machined, you don't have to worry about impact fractures or cracking when you drop it. It's nice and lightweight, has plenty of drag for pike and muskie. It does a great job for an inexpensive reel. And of course, being a perennial Able guy, I have to showcase the new Able Rove. 
the cork on this just has a sound and a tactile feel that can't be matched in any other reel out there. It sounds, it feels great. So much fun to get a fish that takes drag on this reel. It's beautifully machined. Uh, Abel uses a cold rolled aluminum, so it's a stronger, more impact resistant aluminum, so it can take a beating. Very nice, large arbor for quick pickup ratio. Beautiful reel. I'm really excited to fish this one this summer. As for fly line, um, pike and muskie are in different parts of the water column at different times of the year. They'll retreat to deeper water after the spawn, just as ice is coming off. They'll come up onto the flats in later spring as water temps warm, chasing around bait fish. And then as water temps heat back up again, they'll retreat back to the deep. So having fly lines to target those specific depths is an ideal well excuse me, an ideal way to make sure that you're always in fish. For the times of the year that you're using a floating line, this is the Scientific Angler's Titan Long. This is a full floating line with a very aggressive forward taper. It's going to allow you to turn over these giant flies and keep your loops as open as possible without having extra hang. When you're fishing transitional water, uh, up to about eight or nine, 10 feet deep, then we go to the Scientific Angler's Titan Full Intermediate. Being a full intermediate with a one and a half to two inch per second sink rate, you can submerge neutrally buoyant or buoyant flies. You can target the upper parts of the water column fairly consistently and pattern where those fish are hanging out. Then when it comes to plunging the depths, this is the Scientific Angler's Sonar Muskie. This is a grained sinking line, so it doesn't come in a weight for 10, weight for 11. It comes in grain weights like 350, 400. For the application that you are searching for these fish, you want to use as big as you can and still be able to cast your rod. These heavy sinks get down quickly. They turn over big flies. Um, they're super aggressive, so when you're trying to make your cast count, you can put your fly in the zone as quick as possible, get it down there and start your retrieve. Now onto the terminal end. So we know these fish have teeth, we know they have sharp gills, they have lots of places on their body that are designed to break our tackle. So we need heavy leader and tippet. The flip side of that is if we snag on a log and we're using anything greater than about 20 pound test, it's gonna be impossible to break that and get your fly back and not break your rod or your line. So we do need a class section in there that's kind of a fail point if all things go wrong and you need to break off. My personal preference is to build my own leaders. And I know this is extreme for a lot of folks. They don't like to take the time, but I'm a not nerd. So I'm using the SA Absolute Leader Material in nylon and fluorocarbon to build my own leaders. I'm building a nylon butt section. I usually taper down from 50 to 30. And then I attach my class. And this is where I go fluorocarbon, and this is just for abrasion resistance and to increase sink in the fly. So for my class tippet, my breaking point, I'm using a 16 pound test absolute fluorocarbon. Uh, you can attach these together with bimini's, with huff nagels. I'm a big fan of the double uni knot. It's a very strong, easy to tie knot. And then for my bite here in Colorado, I prefer 80 pound scientific English fluorocarbon. Here, our fish are a little spookier than they are in other places in the country, and sometimes they shy away from wire leader. So I like to go with 80 pound fluoro just so I have something to protect them from the teeth. Uh, but it's beefy enough that I can cast these large flies and they're not gonna be able to see it being a fluorocarbon material. A quick trick if you're not into building your own leaders is just to take a 16 or 20 pound fluorocarbon leader and then attach 12 to 18 inches of the bite tippet to the end, whether it be wire or fluorocarbon. The taper on a package taper leader isn't quite aggressive enough for the pike stuff for my needs, but if you're in a pinch and you just need to do it quickly, that's a great option. If you're very much opposed to tying any knots, Scientific Anglers does have pre-packaged predator leaders. They come with either a wire bite for places where wire is appropriate or a fluorocarbon bite for places like Colorado where they're picky. If you can get away with wire, fish wire. You're gonna lose a lot less flies and lose less fish. But here in Colorado, we don't have that luxury, so we're fishing fluorocarbon.
As to what goes to the end of your terminal tackle, let's talk about flies. Again, for a fly box, I'm back to my trusty Umpqua waterproof bug locker. Inexpensive, easy to organize, does a great job, and it's waterproof. In the spring, we're fishing fairly small flies here in Colorado for pike. Um, they like to eat suckers, they like to eat rainbow trout. One of my go-tos for the spring is the flash tail clouser, particularly in this jigged version. With a little bit of Sharpie modification, I can make both of these look very much like a rainbow trout, or I can make them look like a sucker. They fish just fine in the colors that come stock, but it's always fun to Sharpie them up and make them match the forage. Another neutrally buoyant, really popular, really effective Colorado pike fly is Barry's pike fly. Barry Reynolds uh, spends his weekends here with us at Trouts. He is the guru of pike and carp on the fly. He's my mentor, and if you ever want to learn more about chasing pike or carp or all kinds of other crazy species, come visit us in the shop or give us a call and talk to Barry. He's forgotten more than I'll ever know, so he's the man when it comes to fly design. In the later spring and early summer, these fish will chase down topwater. We can get explosions on the surface. It's super exciting. I found slider and diving style topwater flies to be the most effective. This is the Rainey's June Deep Diver. Uh, as you strip, it pops down and pops back up, imitating a wounded bait fish or a frog or a salamander. A ton of action in these, and there's nothing more exciting than seeing a pike or a muskie blow up on a topwater fly. As we move into fall and start targeting larger pike or pike putting on calories for the winter, and then more importantly, targeting tiger muskie and muskie, we're looking to much bigger flies that push water. Muskie tend to feed more on vibration and movement via their lateral line, and having a fly that pushes a ton of water is really gonna get some interest and potentially some eats. Rainey's has some cool offerings, the Truffle Shuffle and the El Chupacabra, kind of a medium and an extra large, that have all of this craft fur head that pushes a ton of water, lots of flash, really sexy action in the water. These are great for late fall pike or for chasing muskie. And then on the absolute biggest end of the spectrum, we're moving towards true muskie flies. This is Umqua's Northwoods Ninja. Huge, very sharp, this is probably a three or four out hook with the point right at the eye. Trim deer hair to push a ton of water and then really big voluptuous profile to trigger those musky eats. This is where those 11 and 12 weights come into play. As we're casting, particularly in the wading realm, not all of us are lucky to fish out of a boat, Managing line becomes really important because long casts are critical to catching fish. Stripping baskets, although you may think they look goofy, are a really good investment and they're gonna save you a lot of frustration. This is the TFO stripping basket. This is a nice inexpensive entry level stripping basket. It comes with a belt and a buckle to attach to your waist. Big triangular fingers inside to keep your line from snagging. Being able to strip quickly into the basket Pick up and recast with zero hang, particularly if you're fishing off the shore and in riprap or bushy areas, is going to save you so much frustration. It's a great investment. I, when I bought my first stripping basket, I never looked back. So always something important to consider. So we hook a fish. We're about to land him. There's some special considerations that we need to take with pike and muskie, and that's particularly that their faces are designed to cut. Their gills are very sharp, their gill plates are very sharp, and their teeth are extraordinarily sharp. So we need to take care in handling them. This is the Rising Special Blend Lipa for Life. This is an inexpensive way to keep your fingers away from pike and muskie teeth. It clamps down on the lower or upper jaw, it's safe for the fish, and you can control them without having to put your hands anywhere near the sharp points. Of course, good pair of pliers. Get those hooks out safely without getting your fingers in there. Uh, these have cutters on them as well, so you can cut that wire or heavy mono pretty easily. And then another important part in pike and muskie fishing that a lot of trout fishermen don't consider is keeping your hooks very sharp. 
Pike and muskie have hard mouths and you really need to bury it in there to keep them stuck. So making sure if you nick a rock or back cast into something that can dull your hook, giving it a quick tune up with a rising diamond file to make sure it's razor sharp and can penetrate those hard mouths. The last important thing I wanna talk about is learning more about the species. As I mentioned earlier, we're lucky enough to work with Barry Reynolds on the weekends, and this is his book, Pike on the Fly. This is the definitive guide to Esox fishing, both here in Colorado and across the country. Uh, I've read it cover to cover multiple times, and there's so much really good information in this. If you have questions beyond this, like I said, reach out to Barry or myself. We love talking about this stuff, but this is a must have and a must read if you wanna start chasing toothy critters. As always, we really like talking about fishing. So if you have questions, email, live chat, give us a call. We love talking fishing. We really hope you get out on the water this spring and chase some new exciting species and let us know how trouts can help. Perfect. Cool. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Smash that like button. Yeah. Don't, don't put that in there. <laughs> Come on, let me put that in there, Rick. Right? Yeah, you can put it in there, but add the don't put that in there part.